Hey, John here. Let's look at a procedure that has input parameters to it, all right? So let's look at the output of this thing before we start talking about how it works. This is gonna draw two of these fiducial markers, a black one here and a red one there. Here's how we're gonna use this procedure. You, select, you set a color, in this case black, you put an X and a Y coordinate on the stack and you invoke the procedure to draw the fiducial. Let me put this so we can sort of see both at the same time. Okay, there you go. So we want a black one at 100 and X, 200 and Y. There's 100 over an X and this is 200 and Y, done. Now we're gonna set uh, the color to red and we're gonna put 200 X, 200 Y and draw another one over there, right? 200 and X, 200 Y right there. Boom, there's the red one. So this is where we're going and this is how we're gonna get there. Okay, so what's this all about? I adopted documentation convention from the blue book, okay? So the way you read this is, here's a procedure, it's called fiducial. Before you call this procedure, you should put an X and a Y coordinate on the stack. When the procedure runs, it will consume them and it won't push anything onto the stack. So the stack will have been left empty. Okay, so how then does it consume these X and Y inputs, and how does it do what it does? Well, you ought to know how to draw circles from a previous video, and you know how to draw lines. Okay, so you, most of this should make sense already. So let's look at these documentation conventions over here and kind of look at how these parameters get to where they're supposed to go. Uh, the way this is commented is for each line of code here, I show you what's left on the stack when this is done. What's on the stack before it's called is up here or the line above it as we go along, okay? So new path doesn't pop or push anything on the stack. It only affects the graphics context. So that's no big deal. You would expect that the X and Y would still be on the stack when this is done. We do a two copy. It takes two elements off the stack, puts a copy of them on there, no problem. Now we do an arc. We saw this before. 0 to 360 draws a circle. So that's the circle over here that's in the fiducial. It's 10 degrees in radius, okay? But arc, remember, has five input parameters. Where are the other two? Well, it's whatever is on the stack before we get here, which is the copy of the X and Y over here. So arc consumes that copy of the X and Y coordinates. And when it's done, the original X and Y are still sitting on the stack. Okay, then move to executes. And we know that consumes two items off the stack. What does it get? Well, it consumes this. And at this point, there's nothing left. Okay, it doesn't put anything back on. But we're moving along nicely here. Now, at this point, the rest is, you know, what we already know. We've got a path. We're starting to fill it in with stuff. Uh, where are we at? We're in the middle of the fiducial at this point because we moved to X, Y. All right, we're going to go to 0, negative 20 R move to, so that moves us down here. We got a 0, 40 R line to, so that goes up 40 points in Y. Then we're going to go minus 20, minus 20 relative to where we're at, which puts us to the left end of the X axis, the horizontal crosshair. Then we do a 40, 0 line, relative line to, so there's the horizontal line, right? And then we're going to set the line width for the stroke that draws the path. I'm going to set it to two, so make these lines extra fat. Make this easier to see in the video here. Normally, I would use point 0.1 points, all right? And that way, the super tiny, thin crosshair, when you print it out on a piece of paper, you'd like to be able to see really accurately where the center of that is. So, uh, again, this is fatter just for the video here, okay? Then you just draw the line, and we're done. End of problem. So there's the whole ball game, right? So what are we doing? We're going to just simply put stuff on the stack, invoke this procedure. The procedure consumes some stuff. It doesn't leave anything behind. And we're moving along. Done. It should be obvious at this point that if this thing wanted to return some value, like a subroutine could in another language, all it needs to do is somehow push these values onto the stack. I could just as easily put, you know, you know, maybe a, a 10 and a 20 on the stack at this point. And when it falls off the end of this procedure and comes back to the code down here after it gets called the first time, that 10 and 20 would be on the stack when this is done. It's as simple as that. Um, we'll see more about some procedures that do that in future videos, but this is how you create one that consumes 
arguments off the stack and then draw stuff with them. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell if you want to hear about more videos as I post them. Thanks. Bye.